Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to do a video on what you need. Uh, well, I guess my garage door is not open, so I'm not going that way. But what you need uh, to process your own deer. Simple stuff, simple concept. Um, but a lot of you guys are going to try doing this for the very first time this year. So let's take it from beginning to end on what you're going to need. So you shoot that deer, you kill that deer, you get a deer on the ground, boned out or get it uh, gutted, you get it home. What are you going to do then? Okay, well, this does not have to be complicated. People get way too caught up in all this crap and get way too carried away. Now, granted, over the years, you are going to acquire uh, more and more stuff that you're going to use for this, but it's not a mandatory deal. It does not take that much. Uh, you may or may not want a gambrel like you have hanging right here that you can hang that deer up by if you want to. Eventually, uh, like I actually have this too. Now I use this mostly. It's electric hoist because I bought it for my snowmobile days so I could work on sleds by lifting a whole sled in the air and things like that. Both of those kind of things work, but you can also do it right on the ground or right on a table. You don't have to necessarily have uh, something like that. But a gambrel like this, I'll put links to this stuff below. They are not very expensive and they work fantastic. Okay, I just got it. All I did is I put a two by four up there that you can see and uh, screwed it into my trusses and I got a strap hanging on there. And you can see it just hangs right from that and comes right down. So it's a very simple uh, design and setup, and I lower it down when I need it. So it's a, a great setup, but you will want something like that to hang that deer on. Doesn't matter what or how. Table wise, um, you know, these little folding tables like this right here are what I take with me in camp, and I use them all the time. Get them on Amazon, they're not expensive. I'll put some links to them, but these work fantastic. You can use those. What we actually use most of the time here in the garage is. We take saw horses, like you can see I have right here, these just standard cheap saw horses there. I also have another set here. Um, but I take the two saw horses and I stand them up and I use either this piece of plywood or those pieces of plywood and I make the table out of those. Uh, that works just as good too. It's actually probably a little more stable even than those tables are. But again, don't overthink this. Okay, anything will work just fine. But the two saw horses are, you get those, I think they're a two pack for like 17 bucks or something for these uh, cheap but functional. Sorry, I got a lot of crap stacked in this corner. Um, but you know, these kind of saw horses here, uh, two of those right there, you know, put one there, pull one there and put a piece of plywood that's left over on them. And uh, it works absolutely fantastic. So uh, don't overthink the process of what you're gonna put as a table or think you have to have a stainless steel table or any of that kind of stuff because it doesn't matter um, since you're not really doing much work on the actual table. See how nice and clean these boards are? They're not stained up or anything like that. I probably have processed probably 15 deer, 20 deer on these pieces of wood here um, and they're fine. You know, they're still nice and clean. Why? Because they don't actually get most of the work done. You're going to take that when it is hanging you are going to skin it hanging and you are going to quarter it hanging. And then what you want to do is you want to use cutting boards. Okay, I'll put links again to this stuff down below for you. But here underneath this stuff is my cutting boards right here. I have four of these under here. You can see them. I'll see all four. One, two, three, four. But they are a standard, simple cutting board right here. Uh, I don't even know what size these ones are. I mean, they're not, like I said, you can no reason to get all carried away with them. Um, but they are, this one is 15 by 15 by 20 cutting board is what I have. And, but we have four of these, so I can stack a couple of them. Sorry, I got a lot of projects going on here, working on a lot of stuff, but so I can put one on that plywood there and then I can take and put another one on there also. So you grab these and I can put them side by side like that on that cutting board and have four of these laying on that on there and I can cut all over these and work on them. They work incredible. I like that they got the little blood groove in them. It just kind of keeps stuff from running off of them, but uh, they're not expensive. They're nothing, you know, that's about the thickness of them. Again, don't overthink it. Okay, don't get too carried away and overthink it. Next thing we are going to need, let me throw some of this stuff out of the way here. It's time to get all this stuff ready for hunting season here anyway. We're two weeks out from hunting season. Um, so let's just throw all this crap out of the way. Other harnesses, things from other videos that just got piled into here. Um, you will need knives. Okay, you are going to need some kind of, well, let me rephrase that. You are going to need a knife. <clears throat> this is my game processing knife set right here. This is all game processing knives. 
okay, in here. We have hooked razor blades, like you see, which are fantastic for skinning. I've shown you that in a few videos last year. Those are incredible. So those are uh, for that. I have a steel. These hooks, they come in very handy if you're skinning or for hanging onto meat and quarters. If you're going to hang them, and you're going to hang them this way by the legs up, when you go to take the second quarter off, it's nice to be able to hook this right into that rib cage and keep that carcass from falling or handling meat. These are coming pretty handy for some of that kind of stuff. So I, I definitely like having those. Again, not mandatory. <clears throat> this one is an actual sharpening, ceramic sharpening rod. This is my cutter with a gut hook on it, just like you see right there. Okay, my uh, carpenter knife that stays in here. This is really all you need. Okay, of all this stuff I have in here, again, I told you, you will acquire stuff throughout the years. This is actually a Havilon. I don't know if I got a blade. I do not have a blade on it, but it is a Havilon handle right there, or one that works for Havilon blades if I want to, and I made my own Kydex, Kydex case for it. So if I want to run Havilon blades in there, I can. Um, I have an X-Acto knife in here somewhere, too, for doing fine caping work. Right there, you see the X-Acto blades there. So I got all kinds of stuff in here. Um, all kinds of knives, but this right here is your simple fillet knife, standard six inch fillet knife. This right here will do every single thing that you need. Of this will do everything that needs to be done with this stuff can be done with a standard simple six inch fillet knife. So uh, again, don't get carried away. Over time, you will, like I said, acquire more stuff in time. But if it was my choice and I could only have two knives, or th this whole box had to go away and I, I had to replace it, I would replace it with a six inch fillet knife and I would replace it with a four inch fillet knife. Those two things right there will do everything in the world that you need when it comes to processing an animal, period. So knife wise, you don't need a whole lot of stuff. So you got your gambrel up there, which I'll put links down to this stuff below, but we're not talking much money. <clears throat> you got a couple pieces of, uh, or a couple uh, saw horses and a piece of plywood or your little table, whatever you want. You got a few cutting boards and um, a couple fillet knives. Bins are nice too. These tubs right here, these meat tubs, these are very handy. You get these on Amazon too and they're dirt cheap and I'll put a link to them below. But they're very nice because they fit under your grinders and they hold your meat very well. Um, keep everything together for you. Um, and it's just, they stack together nice. Like I said, I had three of them once, gave one to a buddy and I never got it back. But usually you buy them in a three pack. Uh, but phenomenal little bins. And then I got a cookie sheet tray here that we use sometimes as well, too, so we can actually stack the steaks and all the stuff on. But again, not expensive things. I'll put links to this stuff for you below. But we'll take one of these in as an example here and show you. So this is really what I'm using this stuff. The reason it's all in the garage is because garage is where I'm working on these things. Okay, this is where this is happening. So I am out here. And I have that table set up right here, and this is where I'm doing it. A five-gallon bucket, just a standard five-gallon bucket. I use that, and I put a garbage bag in it, regular kitchen garbage bag, and then that's where I'm throwing all my uh, scrap pieces of meat in as I'm set up right here on my kitchen table. You guys have seen many videos of that. Um, I'm set up here on my little makeshift table. I bone that animal out, get my steaks cut, all that stuff, get all my grind put into here, everything I need to into this. Um, and then this is what I transfer everything into the house with. So if we come into the house, we do the second part of this process. So we got our bin full of meat. We head into the house where everything else can be accomplished. But again, you can see not much money has been spent on any of this stuff yet. You know, nothing fancy that's required. Um, the only couple items you're gonna need here, we're gonna show you here in one second, um, but not very crazy or expensive or um, much stuff you gotta deal with. But you will need here some sort of a grinder, okay? Some kind of a grinder. This is a Lem Big Bite three quarter, number 12, three quarter horse. Um, I went through a lot of the cheaper grinders for a long time and they worked well, but they just burn out too quick and parts are actually more expensive for them than they are for these. So get a quality grinder. Only quality ones that I'm aware of is by Lem, by Cabela's and by Hobart. And I'm not a big fan of the new models of Cabela's too much, uh, a lot more plastic on them. I like the Lem Big Bite series my, myself personally. Um, and they're not tr ridiculously expensive for an item that is not only gonna last you a lifetime, but it's a hand-me-down heirloom type item. So well worth it. This is very similar to like a KitchenAid mixer 
in in the baking world. Buy this once, you use it the rest of your life, you hand it down, and it's just generational. It's an incredible thing. Um, a Lem grinder <coughs> fits into that category as well. So you'll need something to grind your meat, or if you choose to not do all that and grind the meat, then you can take your meat that you cut up, that's in your bin, that your chunks of meat that you want to have ground, leave them in this bin and then take them to your local processor and tell him to make it into burger for you and he can run it through his grinder. They probably only charge you about 50 cents a pound. Um, you know, so it's going to cost you 10 bucks to turn all of your meat or whatever into hamburger and have it packaged and everything. So most uh, processors will do that for you with, with very minimal fee and not a problem for them to just run it through their batch grinder. But having your own eventually will be a nice thing. Again, links will be down below for you, but I love the Lem grinders. Um, been the best decision I ever made. I don't know what they are right now. I'll have to look, but I think I paid 325 bucks for this number 12, uh, five, six, seven years ago. Um, you will also want some kind of a food saver to be able to seal your own with the, you know, the vacuum pack bags uh, that are here. These, definitely buy these on Amazon. Their prices are absolutely incredible. They blow the doors off of going to a store. Again, I have links below for you. This is a VacMaster Pro 380. The 350 and 380 are the same. The only difference is the 380 is a few inches longer here. Um, you know, it's a little longer, but same concept. I love this. We are talking commercial grade, high quality. Again, I've been through like a half a dozen food savers. Do they work? Yep, they work fantastic. Do they last? No, they don't. This meant to last. We're talking very high quality, very high grade. Um, everything about this is top shelf. It's hard to do one-handed, but it is awesome quality grinder or uh, wrap food wrapper here. So it does incredible stuff, but you will need some kind. Even if it's a, a $75 food saver, um, you know, from, from Walmart, it will do the job for you. But these are the only things you need. So then you can take your steaks and you can food wrap them, you know, or vacuum pack them. And then you're going to want your grinder to grind all your meat up for your burger. And then you can take that and you can vacuum pack it and then you're done. Other things like here, we got some actual dedicated bags that we can put on this and fill them full and then run them through a taper system. I've done videos on that too many years ago, probably six, seven years ago. I had a video on that uh, if, it, if you want to watch it, but this is it. Okay, we're not talking complicated stuff. And at this level, with the things I've shown you, everything that I have shown you in here, from the cutting boards to the bins, uh, to the table setup, to the gamble, to the stuff on this table, these things will let you, if you have a setup like I do here, I will never have to buy anything to process an animal ever again, period. This stuff will last me the rest of my life, do everything I need it to do. I'd never need to buy another item ever again in my entire life to process an animal. I can do it all fast, efficiently, and perfectly with what we have here. So again, don't think it has to be crazy expensive. Don't think you got to go all out and get, you know, spend tons and tons of money on this stuff. It's not necessary. These simple few items can let you process everything from you know your deer to small game to bears to elk to, it doesn't there, there's no difference in this um and there's so many different things on the market that are kind of gimmicky hokey or different things that people say you gotta have or you watch some of these things about setting up the ultimate uh you know meat processing center you know we're not doing that we don't there's no reason for us to get that carried away and go that nuts about all this stuff. I mean, you notice here, I don't have anything dedicated towards game processing in here. Um, yet, on the same note, you know, some years I'm killing 16 big game animals. And I'm processing them all myself. I don't need to have something specific. When I have a couple of sawhorses and some plywood, a few cutting boards, a tub, a couple flay knives, a grinder, and a... Uh, um, you know, in a vacuum packer. That's all we need. Don't overthink this. Don't get too crazy about it um, or, or think that you got to go nuts. It's a very simple, easy process. Just get these few things that you need. You can go the cheap route to begin with. I will put some decent cheaper grinders and a couple decent cheap va vacuum packers in there because those are the only two items where all your money is coming into. You want to get into sausage stuffers and, uh, you know, uh, spice mixers. There's, there's all kinds of things you can go with it. But you don't need to, okay? It doesn't have to be that crazy or get that carried away. Us, personally, for our summer sausages and our breakfast sausages, I take meat in a bin, like I told you. I'll, I will grind my own. 
put it in here and I bring that to one of my local uh, butchers here uh, in West Branch actually it's Clemmer's Meat Processing they're incredible they're in West Branch Michigan Clemmer's Meat Processing I have them uh, make my summer sausages I have them make all my seasoned mixes and stuff and what's nice is they're making it right from my stuff as I bring it to them and it's really easy so I really like working with those guys for that so I don't own um, you know the mixers and the stuffers and the things like that I don't have to but don't think for a second that this has to be a $1,000 investment kind of deal or a $1,500 investment kind of deal to make this happen. It does not. We don't have to get that carried away. You only need a few simple items and you're ready to start processing your own deer. And it's not hard to do and it's a lot of fun to do. So thanks for watching. Links will be down below and I will be back with another one soon. All right.